So very good day to all our viewers today. And uh, we are coming up with yet another interesting uh, presentation about doing business in Cyprus. So I'm Dr. Nabil Ahmed with you. And with me, I have Michael Damianos. Uh, this presentation was uh, done to us by our team members, Ms. Kavita Agarwal and uh, Evelyn. Let's move ahead. All right, just to give you a brief about uh, Michael. So Michael happened to visit Dubai three weeks ago and then we had a, we caught up for a cup of coffee. And then we decided that we do a presentation together on doing business in Cyprus with more focus on the new developments with regard to the trust that's formed in Cyprus, which is gonna be very beneficial to our existing clients and our viewers. So to talk a little bit more about Michael, uh, Michael established the firm in 2010 and today it's a team of 11 highly professional staff there where they do legal and paralegal work. And even though it's a full service law firm, there are specific areas that they focus on are international mergers and acquisition, global corporate advice, energy, general commercial work, insolvency, banking, finance, capital markets. They're also into real estate uh, advisory, private client and Cypress International Trust. That's where we're gonna be focusing more on. And to name another few areas that they focus on is on the intellectual property data production and shipping. So thank you, Michael, for being with us today. And to just give our viewers a little bit insight about DVS, as you already have seen from the previous videos, we were formed in 2007 with offices in Dubai, Singapore, US, and headquartered in India. So we primarily focus on uh, international services for global and domestic business and tax, legal risk, and M&A. So yes, Michael, over to you. So we have seen this very beautiful island uh, and we always wish to know what is so attractive about Cyprus and what can our clients benefit from doing business in Cyprus. Over to you, uh, Michael. Thank you very much. So, I mean, Cyprus is a, it's a, it's a tax structuring jurisdiction. It's a member of um, the EU since 2004. So it follows EU law in all respects, we're talking about directors, regulations, and the like. And of course, it enjoys all the benefits of the European Union fundamental freedoms, like the free movement of goods, services, capital, and the freedom of uh, establishment. Um, trading with, in, or through Cyprus is not burdensome, is not bureaucratic. There are not, no real barriers to trade as the jurisdiction is set up to assist uh, international clients in doing their business either in or through Cyprus. So it has been over the years used massively in this type of work. Um, our legal system is based on the English legal system. Cyprus is an ex-colony, so we are a common law jurisdiction. So our company law and our contract law are close to identical to English law. We follow equity rules. So all the benefits that you would get under English law, you also get them under Cyprus law. And since Brexit, uh, Cyprus has been a very good, I mean, very good alternative jurisdiction to um, set up business. If you're used to the common law system and you want to do business within the EU, or you want to have an entity uh, that is uh, EU regulated, let's say, then Cyprus has been a very good alternative to the UK. We speak English, everyone speaks English, English is, prevails with, uh, you know, along um, professional firms, so it's very easy to do work. And along the common law system and the EU, it has been extremely beneficial for the country. Um, now, there are a few different vehicles for doing business in Cyprus. The, the most common, the obvious, is a limited liability company. And by limited liability company, we're talking about an entity that has a separate legal personality to its shareholders and, and the shareholders have limited liability, the same way that you would get in all types of common law systems. In Cyprus, it's very simple, speedy, straightforward to incorporate and all the basics around it for, follow the, the basic common law systems, uh, just like uh, the, U, the UK and, and other offshore jurisdictions. But with Cyprus, you actually get it within the EU. Something that's also very interesting, which is, I would say, the an, an, another very common vehicle to use are the Cyprus International Trusts, and these are used mainly for estate planning, asset protection, and preservation of anonymity, which we're going to go through later on. These are extremely uh, used in the last decades, and I would say even more used in the last few years. 
Uh, there are also other legal forms. I mean, if you're an overseas entity and you want to set up a branch in, in Cyprus, you're able to. There are partnerships, there are, there are, there are funds and the like. Um, some very basic stuff on our on our tax system. We have a corporation tax of 12.5%, which is one of the lowest in the EU and the lowest in the Eurozone because Cyprus is part of the Euro as well. Um, in the, I mean, personal taxation starts at 19 and a half thousand euros. SAPS has a, a wide network of double tax treaty with approximately 60 countries, and it, this is increasing all the time. Um, and a lot of things, a lot of sources of income in Cyprus are not subject to tax, just like uh, dividend and yeah. interest and royalties that are not subject to tax. They're subject to special defense contribution that is only payable if you are a physical person residing in Cyprus. So for overseas investors, this is not paid. Yeah. Um, profits from the sale of shares, there's no capital gains tax, well, that's fine. And the same goes on with other you know, other types of taxation. We don't charge uh, permanent establishment abroad or anything like that. So let's say an, an easy example with respect to companies is that if you're getting, for example, dividends from a different jurisdiction and you're a separate entity, those dividends flow through Cyprus without any taxation and they go to the parent shareholder, wherever, wherever that shareholder is without withholding any tax. Um, now, with respect to individual taxation, because Cyprus is also very good with respect to private client work. There are ways of becoming a Cypriot resident and paying very little tax. You just need to make sure that you are in Cyprus for at least 60 days in a year and you're not tax resident somewhere else. There are many different types of uh, personal incentives in uh, being uh, a Cypriot resident and there is no estate or, or inheritance tax, which is very beneficial for physical persons. Um, other uh, I, uh, other tax, let's say incentives in Cyprus are, are the first one is the, the IT box. If you're actually developing software programs and patents, um, then you're able to benefit from reduced taxation of 80%. So your effective tax of 12.5% goes down to 2.5. This is very good. It's very beneficial for those actually develop the IT. There is also, um, Another incentive that is, has been going around for only a few years in Cyprus, which is the film industry. Now we have worked a lot on the film industry over the years. The, the, um, the Cyprus government is giving a lot of very good incentives for film production companies. You can actually get a, a cash rebate of up to 35% on qualified expenditure incurred in Cyprus, as well as a tax credit uh, by the production company for a tax deduction of up to 50 percent of the taxable income during the year of production of, of, of production so um investors can obviously deduct expenses related to the uh to the film infrastructure and all the rest and this is very beneficial cyprus although a small place is not very small we do have the sea we do have mountains uh we do have snow in 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 the winters so it's ideal for you know, developing and producing all types of films. And this has been very, um, uh, very good over the last few years. And a lot of films are actually, um, you know, I'm talking about Hollywood films that are actually being produced in Cyprus at the moment, and you will see them in the next few years. And this is um, very interesting as well, because, uh, you know, you have a lot of benefits for the, you know, film producers. And now with COVID passing away, people will tend to go to the cinemas more often and, uh, producers will be looking at more avenues to increase the filming uh, industry size. So this is going to be a very interesting know-how. Yeah. Uh, ab absolutely. The infrastructure is very good. The tax rebates are very good. So this is something to push on as well. Um, now talking about also going through immigration law and, and, and policy, you can get very many different permits for moving to Cyprus. If you want a permanent residence permit, there is a fast track procedure where the investment is at 300,000 to basically real estate. And you also need to secure some basic in income of about 30,000 and you're able to get a residence permit within the country, which has been commonly used in the last decade, if, if not more. There are other procedures that you can invest slightly less, but it takes much longer. And our experience is that overseas investors go for this uh, fast track procedure that you can see on the screen. Uh, but Cyprus these days, I would say in the last, you know, after, after COVID, within 2022, there has been a huge push on um, 
companies relocating to Cyprus and bringing their, their stuff to Cyprus. Uh, and if you, if, if for entities that want to relocate stuff, it's a very easy and good process to have a base within the EU. There's also the new digital nomad scheme. So if you're a third party national, so we're talking about non-EU individuals, um, you can get a temporary residence permit in Cyprus if the work relates to the use of IT. IT. So it's a new scheme. There's a few hundred uh, visas to be taken out. And this is for professionals that are in the IT sector, including, let's say, um, you know, freelancers that actually get paid themselves. So that this, is, this is also very good and it's been very widely used in the last few months. Um, I just one question other, on the previous slide. Yeah. Uh, you know, since uh, we are talking from an Indian perspective, uh, Indian nationals, if they were to invest 300,000 in real estate and also show a secure income of an annual income of 30,000 euros per year, they get eligible for a permanent residentship in Cyprus, right? Correct. And using this permanent residentship, is it only for travel into Cyprus or can they use this permanent residence to travel to other Europe uh, EU zone as well? Well, with the use of a permanent residence permit for Cyprus, it's extremely easy to get Schengen visa because you are deemed to be a resident in Cyprus. So the visa, even if you're not a Cypriot national, you're an Indian national, it's very easy to get. You just go to an embassy, in, a foreign embassy in Cyprus and you get a Schengen visa. So it is, it is benefit. it's an extra step, but it still, it still is beneficial. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so some other considerations, I mean, if you look at the location of Cyprus, it is really on the crossroad between Europe, Asia and Africa. So it is a very good investment hub for all these jurisdictions, hub by means of uh, Asians and Africans, I mean, people in these continents investing into Europe by being very close to them. Uh, the, uh, the Middle Eastern shores from Cyprus are 300 kilometers. And uh, let's say flight to Lebanon is 22 minutes. So we are very close in, in proximity. Um, Cyprus maintains a very strong network of uh, professional service providers, accountants, lawyers, auditors, banking services, because Cyprus has been, as I said, a common law, it's, it is a common law jurisdiction. We use the English legal system and we have been doing this for decades. So the professional staff is very well educated, mainly in the EU, UK or the US, and they, they they speak English fluently and you're able to provide a very, very high end uh, yeah. service. So, I mean, these are obvious advantages if you're trying to do business with a country, I mean, with a country that you do your structures on. Um, now, um, we can go on to, let's say, uh, specific yeah. subjects. So coming to the trusts today, uh, if you were to make our viewers uh, more clear, what is trust and how is it different from a limited liability company? Because in the initial stages of your slides, you said uh, LLC, limited liability company, is a much more easier format and which is very common. But now the focus is moving towards the trust. So just to throw some light on that, uh, Michael. Correct. A limited liability company in Cyprus, it's, it's a common vehicle where the shareholders have, I would, you know, where the shareholders have limited uh, liability is an investment vehicle to do business. A trust is something different. A trust is where it's basically you have um, a special ownership right where the settlor, who is the person who has the property, will transfer this property to someone called the trustee. And that trustee is professionally bound in accordance with the wishes, let's say, of the settlor, either under the trust instrument, instrument including a letter of wishes sometimes, to act in the best interest of the beneficiaries. So you have a set law, who is the person who has the property, who gives this property for reasons that we can go through later to a trustee, let's say a professional lawyer, a professional accountant in Cyprus, to, to maintain that property for the benefit of the beneficiaries. And the beneficiaries can be the set law, but it's usually the case that it's the set laws, let's say under eight children or anything like that. So it is a special purpose vehicle that is flowed through. It doesn't have legal personality. Everything is happening through the actual trustee. But we'll go through um, sure. later into explaining exactly how this is beneficial. Sure. So two points here, Michael. So your firm in Cyprus it does have all the legal requirements to act as a trustee on behalf of the client? Of course, in order to uh, be a trustee, especially in a, in a Cyprus International Trust, um, 
you need to have a license. And these licenses are issued by the Cyprus Bar Association or other professional association in Cyprus. All lawyers are able to provide this, um, this service if they have the experience in doing so. And our firm has provided uh, trustee services for a number of years to a number of clients internationally from different parts of the world. And we're definitely able to provide this, this service. Perfect. And if I were to understand what are the different uh, requirements for setting up this trust, and that will be interesting to understand as well from a residency status point of view. Yes. So uh, as, as, as previously mentioned, you need to have a set law. The set law for a Cyprus International Trust needs to be someone who um, has not been a Cyprus resident the year before the uh, incorporation of the, the creation of the trust. The same goes for the beneficiaries. So you can set up the, the trust, let's say in 2022, and are able to move to Cyprus in 2023 or not move to Cyprus at all. That trustee needs to be a licensed uh, person and that, that you need a licensed trustee within the duration of the trust. So you will always need an accountant or a lawyer, but that accountant or lawyer will be able to run this, um, this trust. So um, let's say from that uh, perspective, this is the difference between local and international trust, but we're talking about international trusts for now, which is what you require and what is, and this is what international clients need because it has obvious tax benefits that we can go through later. Understood. Interesting. And how are these trusts commonly used in Cyprus, like from a family office perspective or a family business perspective? Yeah. I mean, there, I mean, trusts are different, are used in many different respects, but they're most commonly used for, um, or let's say tax planning. Um, okay. They are. We can go through a few, a few, a few. Let's say examples of, of this. I mean, you can create a trust for um, um, for a beneficiary who's not yet born. Let's say you can create a trust for the benefit of your children, born and unborn, which is a good way of doing it. So you use a trust because you want to pass on property and you want to pass on property to someone that cannot handle that property themselves. Sometimes those individuals are young age, so let's say below 18, sometimes even above 18. Uh, and let's say the settlor wants to give them the property when they're 30, so they, there is the creation of a trust. But I mean, the main reasons are infancy, um, not existing, but also a lot of uh, a lot of times is actually mental illness or legal incapacity. Right. So you need someone to look after those um, those those funds. So this is the main reason for using that. There are other ways of using trust, like in in employment uh, schemes or even in commercial banking and related transactions. Let's say you need to uh, you're you're lending an 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 entity, but the the entity is not doing very well. And you want to put that money in a trust before using. These are all types of um, vehicles that are used in international transactions. But the main purpose of using this Cyprus International Trust, at least, is to preserve wealth and pass on wealth to mainly um, your children or your relatives or someone that you want to pass this on and you want that vehicle to be tax-free in Cyprus, you want it to be out of your estate and there are benefits that will go through, I think, um, in, the next, in the next slide. You, you, can, you can proceed with the benefits, uh, Mike. Yeah, so basically, um, as Cyprus International Trust, you have the obvious benefit of being tax-free and you can use it if you are not resident in Cyprus. So, so if, 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 even for the locals, they, if they live abroad, they, they can send up this year and move to Cyprus next year. But it's a major, a, a major advantage, a major benefit of using Cyprus International Trust is that there is pure, there's complete confidentiality with respect to the trust itself in order to actually get information on the trust it is very difficult you need a you need a court order for someone that is not let's say the local authorities to actually have anything uh, to actually find anything around a trust which is very beneficial especially for people who want to preserve anonymity for their own purposes um succession law does not affect a Cyprus international trust so uh if you have it's like pa having passed on your property already so this goes out of your estate in the event of uh, the settler passing off. So let's say you have 
uh, an asset worth 10 million and you put it in a trust, when the settlor passes on, then this, this, this property is not within the, um, within the estate, which is very beneficial. So you don't pay any taxes either. Um, if you pass on this property, then it cannot be touched by creditors unless there is some kind of fraud in the next couple of years. So you can simply pass on your property into a trust. And if something goes wrong, those creditors cannot touch that property. Um, as mentioned before, income derived from sources outside Cyprus are, are, are not, is not taxable in Cyprus as long as the beneficiaries of the tr trust are not tax residents. So right. the, tax does, the, the trust does not pay anything in Cyprus if you're not Cypriot. Um, and there are some other legal benefits that you, you can have it on for an unlimited period of time, which are obvious, obvious benefits if you want something very permanent. Um, so there has also been an amendment that is a fifth amendment on the AML directives in terms of beneficial ownership of companies and trusts. If you can throw some light of what are the benefits from using a Cyprus and trust in this respect of the AML's, uh, you know, amendments. Yes, I think this is extremely important in terms of unanimity and there's, there is an obvious uh, difference between the two. So it is very important. I will try explaining as, you know, as uh, clearly as possible. Now, since amendments globally with respect to, um, you know, showing the ultimate beneficial owners of NTDs in public registers, Cyprus has developed what it had to develop over the years from, you know, uh, EU requirements mainly. And limited liability companies have to disclose their beneficial owners at the company's registry, which is something that is visible to the general public by payment of a small fee. So for companies, you have to disclose beneficial ownerships. For trusts, you don't have to disclose these beneficial ownerships. Even let's yeah. say a trust needs to be registered with the Cyprus Bar Association, but with the Cyprus Bar Association, you only register the date and the name of the trust and the trustee. So nothing to do with the settlers, nothing to do with the beneficiaries. With the Cyprus uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, which is an extra filing these days, although you, let's say, register more information on the settlers and the beneficiaries, this information is not accessible to the general public. You need to prove that you have legitimate interest. It's not exactly clear what legitimate interest is today, but legitimate interest would probably be um, if you're tipped off by, let's say, a tax authority somewhere else. So, this is not, you will, no one can simply send a letter and get information. Uh, they will need a court order to go to court in Cyprus and prove that they have an interest in this, in getting information before they do. So anyone who simply wants to keep anonymity and there's nothing wrong against that will not have this property show. So, but an extra step going on to this, let's say you have a Cyprus International Trust, which is the shareholder of a secret entity. So you have the trust and you have the entity, the secret entity as well. The beneficial owners of the secret entity, because you have a trust shareholder, are not disclosed at the registrar of companies either. So it okay. gives the anonymity of the entity as well, which is extremely beneficial, having an extra That's layer important. and having indeed having the anonymity. And we expect that international trust will be heavily used in the future for anonymity purposes because it bypasses this very important hurdle. Perfect. Okay. Very clear. And what, what are the information that has to be filed uh, with the trustee? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say the information that has to be filed with the new trust register held by the Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission is it is the name of the trust. It is the type of the trust, the country of establishment, because sometimes you can, you should also register trusts that are not secret trusts if there is a secret trustee. So the date of establishment, the governing law, which is usually Cyprus law, the ownership structure, so who the beneficial owners are, um, and some other information regarding the beneficial owner. So the authorities in Cyprus for uh, anti-money laundering reasons, they need to have this information, but this information is only used for these authorities. And in the, it's in the same way that you, your lawyers and your accountants would have this information. Nothing more than that, which is extremely beneficial as well. All right, interesting, interesting. And uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, as I said, Cyprus International Trusts have attracted much attention in the last um, 
years. You know, we mentioned the obvious benefits compared to companies, the different ways of, of using it. Um, we believe that it's going to be a very good option for wealthy individuals and company structures to actually use Cyprus International Trust in the next few years. And this is indeed something that we have seen happening these days. Um, so we do believe that this is something, you know, it is a structure for the future. It's all a matter of people understanding the basics behind it, understanding that they are not losing their, their properties, just that as a professional managing the property for the benefit of themselves or, their, or, or the ones that they actually want this to happen for. And um, tax-wise, it's, 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 it's very, very, very beneficial. It's like a dream coming true, actually, for people that do not want to pay uh, taxes on dividend and interest. The Cyprus International Trust is brilliant. Sure, sure. So from your concluding remarks, it's quite clear that, you know, the uh, it's going to become even more popular to use trust as opposed to companies. And uh, definitely, I mean, our viewers, if they have any questions, we can just, just reroute them to you, uh, Michael, for any clarification. And then we'll look forward for any other uh, opportunities on that front. Thank you very much. As I, mean, as, as I said before, the Cyprus companies will not disappear. It's just that the obvious benefits of the trust will make users of companies to decrease and users of trust to increase. But as mentioned, and as, as you rightly uh, mentioned, anything that we can help with in terms of answering specific questions on specific requirements for specific clients, we would be more than happy to do. Great, great. So thank you so much, Michael, for taking your time and uh, explaining us much more in detail. And uh, as we said, if there's any questions from our viewers, we're gonna just roll it back to you and then we take it forward from there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye.